All right, uh, good afternoon. Um, so uh, this morning we got back in and uh, obviously watched, watched the tape. Coaches watched it on the plane. Uh, got a chance to grade it this morning um, and look at it again. Uh, brought the players in, uh, had our team meeting uh, this morning and went over the, the you know our parameters and our goals that we always do. Um, I talked about some uh, individual performances, but more importantly talked about our football team. And, you know, the positive things we can take away from that. And one of the things I took away from that and I showed the football team this morning was, you know, in the middle of that third quarter, we took the ball away, you know, and we uh, responded on offense and, and kicked a field goal. Um, and then we stopped them on defense again, and we responded with a 90-yard 90 90 drive uh, to put us in scoring position to make it a game. And that just shows me, uh, for the guys, the mental toughness and the physical toughness that the work they've put in to be able to do that. Um, and you guys saw the effort and the intensity that they operated in uh, during that moment. Uh, you know, certainly there was moments that we got a, a correct, um, and there's some of those, and wins and losses, and there's a lot of good things that we did right. And so we point those out. And as I reiterated before, uh, that after the performance, the score is the score. So last week, the score was 19-10. This week, the score was the score. And we look at the performance just as that, a performance and the correction of it. So the whole meaning behind doing that is that how do you uh, get consistent performers, you know, uh, through training young players, uh, through working with our veterans? How do we do that? Well, we have to look at performance for what it is. And the tricky thing about football is that there's emotion involved in it. There's intensity involved in it. So you have to have that. You cannot be a robot. So we have to have passion and emotion in inside the game. And that's what I said to the guys about the 24-hour rule. So when we win, there is a 24-hour rule. You got you to flush it and move on. Look at corrections. Look at, look at what we did well. And same thing when you lose. You got you to gotta flush it and move on. Uh, after 24 hours, certainly this hurts a lot more uh, than, than winning, of course. But uh, we have to look at it one and the same after the performance. And then we have to reset our minds now. Uh, players have the day off, uh, obviously looking at the new opponent with the Houston Texans. And they have the day off, and they're going to reset their minds, get their body rested, and get ready for a great Wednesday practice. And our eyes are forward now, looking forward to our next opponent. Um, so with that, I'll open up to questions. Yeah, on, the, on the topic of corrections, going back to the fourth and goal play, when you watch that back, where are some places where you could have had more precise execution to yeah, yeah, you know, just push, you know, just push, you know, get, getting guys lower, getting pad level down, um, you know, and getting, you know, just movement at the point of attack. Um, but we like to play, you know, it was a quarterback power play. We thought we outnumbered the, uh, well, we did outnumber the point of attack there and uh, just a little more push, a little more uh, pad level. And then on the previous play, when Justin scrambles and he's yep. lunging for the goal line, from your point as a coach, what is your kind of rules in terms of when to, to reach for that pylon? Because it's inches away from also being a, a fumble out of bounds or through the end zone. Yeah, sure. That's always a risky, risky proposition there. You know, that was, you know, third down. So we, you know, we always say, hey, if you're going to go for the score, go for the score. Um, but so we've all seen the ones in the pylon, they go out the wrong way, and all of a sudden it's the other person's ball. So um, you, it's a tricky element there, but he was going for it, and he was real close, you know, six inches away. This is kind of a weird question, but if, if he had scored there, would you have gone for two? I will leave that to uh, another day. <laughs> yeah, but we certainly know what we're going to do there. Yeah, when, you're, when you play young guys like you have been willing to do, you know there's going to be moments, learning moments, and things that they go through. So on a Monday after a game like last night with Kyler Gordon, what's your message to him? What's your coaching point? Yeah, I, I just got done talking to him, and it's everything I say to every young player that I've ever played that's gone through these moments. You know, there's going to be ebb and flow of the course of a rookie season, and and that's the way it is. It doesn't matter if you're dealing with a guy that's rookie of the year or, or, or not. There's going to be those things, and what you tell them is, hey, take one experience at a time and put it in your file. You have to learn from that. So go back and look at all the plays that you made, all the plays that you, that you want to correct, and then put them in a file, okay, and say, what would I have done, and put those to memory. And making sure you, you study those things and visualize those things as you go during the course of this week coming up so you can make those corrections. Because a good pro doesn't make the same mistake twice. You know, they get better and they improve, and that's how they become a pro, a better pro at year four, year five, and then become an all pro. 
What's, your, what's, your, you what's your level of concern with the passing game and the, the lack of production through two weeks? Yeah, so, you know, we're looking at that. You know, I think that uh, it, is a, it is a concern. We want to get better there. We want to improve. Uh, there's no question. We want to improve on a lot of, lot of part of our football team, other aspects of our football team, but that's one of them. You know, the touches, who are we looking at, you know, getting touches early, um, getting guys involved. Th- all those things are being looked at as we're looking through the course of our whole football team. That's especially true when it comes to, you know, Mooney only has, what, two catches for four yards to do games? Yeah, we need to highlight our skill. We know that. We know that. So we're going to try to do a better job of that. We will do a better job. We got, like I said last night, we got great coaches. Those guys are smart. They know how to get it done, and we will get it done. Yeah. Can this passing game thrive if it doesn't have big contributions, if it's not being led by Mooney and Komet? No, I think you got to highlight your skill. You know, you got to highlight your skill. You know, like we highlighted, uh, you know, Demo last night, you know, running the football. He's a good runner. We have good run blockers. We highlighted that last night, and that was a positive coming out of the game. You know, so in the passing game, let's highlight our skill. You know, let's get the, let's feed the guys that, that have skill that can take a short throw and turn it into a big a big game, you know, that can go uh, downtown. And, we, you know, we have a good deep ball thrower. So we should utilize that, too. And we're going to look at all aspects of that. Like I said, we've got great coaches. They're going to work tirelessly to get that done this week. With Komet, how do you feel like you guys through two games have navigated using him as a blocker versus letting him get out to have a chance to make plays? Yeah, we're, we're looking at that. You know, we certainly need to improve uh, on all those areas, and we're going to. Matt, Matt you, threw the ball, you threw the ball 11 times last night. That doesn't happen very often in the modern NFL. Do you trust Justin to throw more? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We trust him for sure. What, what was the, the rationale on the distribution between run pass? Especially in the fourth quarter, you're running, you're getting good runs. Right. The clock's moving, and you know, maybe the other sideline is okay with the clock. Broken. Yeah. We were going with what was working. You know, the run game was obviously we were really hitting some big runs in there, as you guys saw, and it was, it was working for us. And it put us into a one-score game uh, going into – what is it, eight minutes or so? Do you think Justin would like to throw more, and how do you balance that one game? Uh, I just think, like I said last night, I just think you need balance. You know, at the end of the day, we like to be 50-50, you know, in a game that's you're able to do that, and uh, we want to be, have balance for sure because it keeps the defense, you know, honest. Yeah, Brown came, he came wide open on a player, third and nine. You're saying Brown came wide yeah. open? Did you talk to Justin about that play and just why he didn't pull the trigger there? Yeah, that was uh, he converted his route on that. Uh, St. Brown did, and uh, that's something we're we're continuing to work on. You know, if he beats a guy like that, he'll convert that route, and uh, he just didn't didn't see him at that moment. Yeah, yeah, he made the decision to check it down. Uh, on the Packers' opening drive, they hit uh, Aaron Jones. Might have been their second drive. Uh, hit Aaron Jones along the sidelines on third down. Was there a consideration for a challenge on that play? No, no, there wasn't because there was a catch. You know, he caught. He had uh, he had possession of the ball, and then there was you know two two moves, and then a third act. So there was two feet, and then a third act. And that third act, once there's two feet in bounds, the third act can be out of bounds. Okay, and if he loses the ball at that point, it doesn't matter because he he. Uh, he did the third act, so that's why we didn't call it. Now that you've got did, two did games Justin, worth of... Did Justin look comfortable to you last night when you're watching this film back? Did he look comfortable to you? Uh, yeah, I think at times. I mean, I think every quarterback feels comfortable at certain times and uncomfortable. I mean, overall, I thought he looked comfortable. How do you think, Ro- how do you think Roquan Smith played? I thought he played solid. I thought he played solid. You know, we're working with those linebackers right now, working downhill. Um, and, and playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. And that's really twofold. That's for both the linebackers. Because what that does, it helps our defensive line take off the double teams. And we're, we have to do a better job with that. What do you want to see him do on, uh, on the toss to Jones for the 15-yard touchdown? Where do you want to see Roquan on that play? Yeah, uh, he, was, he was good on that. I uh, need just more aggressiveness going downhill. Going downhill there. And that's, that's really a, a play for all 11 of us uh, on that one there. You talked last two, night about uh, it dep- I think it depends on where we have Lucas. You know, if we have Lucas inside or outside, depending on what he can do with his thumb, I think that'll determine what we're going to do. Uh, but we have to wait and see on that. You, so. talked less, you talked last night about uh, cleaning up your tackling, but what else needs to be done to shore up the run defense? I think it's the cup, you know. So we, one thing we talk about is is the cup on the defense. So that's your force player, you know, your your pursuit players inside out, and then the apex player. That's the defensive back that's working inside out. If he's the middle safety or if it's the corner, he's outside in. So you're really putting a cup on the ball, and I think our angles have to improve. 
you know, so I think our eagles were off. If you watch the tape, we were overrun a little bit, and then they were cutting back and getting some hidden yards. I think that happened a few times, and we have to improve on that. So that's the fundamental things that we've been teaching since day one. We just have to keep getting better at at those things. In your history, the teams you've had that have had poor tackling games, which I imagine they happen to resolve, and how quick is the response? How often do you come back with a good, with a good game and avoid two bad games? Or how quickly do you get the message across and, <coughs> and see uh, execution out of that the following week? Yeah, I think it can turn around pretty quick. It, it's it's about really the fundamentals of it, but more it, more importantly and as important, it's about determination. You know, it's about the front seven uh, really really committing to it. You know, the linebackers in D-line and the secondary about them committing to, you know, not giving up the big play in the running game. And on the uh, illegal forward pass, obviously the latter stage of that is just a, a, a mental breakdown there. But before Justin gets through the line of scrimmage, what was your overall diagnosis of, of what he could have done once the pocket was disrupted a little bit? Yeah, well, I mean, just the obvious. You know, I think he could have ran, you know, and just, just went for it because he's so fast. Um, I think that could have been an option, you know, and I think he had several other options there he could have done, but, uh, you know, he, he knows he's got to be a, do better on that play for sure. Did you sense there was a chance to reset prior to the line of scrimmage? Yeah, after he yeah I, think he fe- I think he feels that too, for okay. sure, yep. Hey, you, you talked about you, you'd love a, a 50-50 run pass, and we've heard Justin say he wants to pass. Luke said he's a quarterback who only mm-hmm. wants to pass. Is the disconnect as simple as you guys were just running the ball well, or is there more to why that was just such a disparity? Last no, time? I think that was it, you know, because we were running it so well, um, you know. And, again, like I said, we have to we have to get balance. And Luke knows that. Justin knows that. We know that. You know, so we're going we're gonna to create that. When you look back at it, were there opportunities for that run to create more play action opportunities? Yeah, that's what you do it for, right? You're going to open up those lanes. And, you know, you know we, we see it all over the league. When a team's able to run the ball, it certainly opens up uh, the passing lanes for sure. Taking a, a deliberately conservative approach with Justin passing because you're trying to give him some runway to get his footing in the offense? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I mean, obviously, we're two games into a new offense, you know, so you can certainly understand that, hey, the rhythm and the timing of it's going to improve every single week, and we're going to get that. It's going to improve, keep improving, and, you know, it might be in small increments, it might be in big jumps, uh, and we'll see how that goes, but certainly it's not deliberate at all. Screen. Does Morrow need to get over and force it back? What's yeah, yeah. That that was the play I was talking about last yeah. night. You know, in the second twenty-eight. Yes, we got to do a much better job there. And he he just got to hammer that, hammer it back to the defensive line. You know, the defensive line can't jump on that. They got to keep their feet on the ground, raise their hand up to knock the ball down. But they got to uh, what we call out of the stack and plant and go. And you know, if we do a good job there, it's probably a five or six yard gain. Because Quinn had this, your D line got their hands up, right? Yeah, they both jumped. You know, so when you get your hand, when you jump up in the air, you can't move, right? So you got to make sure you can plant point and drive and get out of there as quick as possible because those plays hit quick. To, clar- to clarify the right guard thing, sorry, just going back to that. To clarify the right guard thing, were you saying if Lucas Patrick can't play center, there'll still be a rotation, or Lucas Patrick's your guy? And if so, like, what does one guy have to do to just? Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to talk to Simo about that. I mean, I, I know both of them rotated in there. You know, I saw Lucas play well at times, and I saw Tevin play well. But we'll see where it is in terms of the center position. You know, what, where is that handling the ball? So I think it's you know we'll know it'll clarify itself more Wednesday and Thursday. Leading into this game, you kind of were dismissive of this whole Bears-Packers rivalry thing. Having gone up there, having heard the crowd, Bears still suck, Aaron Rodgers kind of encouraging that. Do you have a different sense of that rivalry, a different feeling about it coming? Yeah, I mean, going into it, I certainly know the rivalry. I've been in the league 15 years. You know, I understand and watched the league for a long time. So I understand the rivalry, you know, and respect it for sure. So.